Okay, so so many different ADLs have been introduced. Uh, after a while, so people realized that in the architecture design community that there was also a need to, to combine this ADL, so transform from one ADL to another ADL. Okay. So the advantage of different ADLs is that you can represent multiple domains and dedicate tools, but combination of these is difficult. For any new ADL that we have, it, it meant that we had to define a transformation for this. So, so we have like from ADL to A, so for each of these transformations, we need a, a specific uh, implementation, okay? To be compatible, right? Um, what does ACME? ACME was, is another ADL which aimed to solve this problem. Okay. Uh, developed at CMU together with USC. It's a general purpose ADL, but basically not, uh, it is, is it the, the, the basic goal was to, to, to represent, to, to provide a, an interchange language. To avoid this situation, where there's no interchange language at all, no intermediate. So if we had a new ADL, we will have, need to have lines between all these existing ADLs, if you want to combine. What ADL ACME does is provide the, the lowest common denominator of all these ADLs and aims to provide an interchange language. What does it mean? So if you want to actually to bridge or cooperate or transform one ADL to another, you don't do directly, but you use a, the ACME as an intermediate step. Okay. And the idea was that all ADLs should be able to, to map to ACME, and from there we could define the mapping to the source ADL. In this way, actually, this reduced the number of the required transformations. You just say, oh, we have just one interchange language, and everybody should actually commit to that. For example, here, ADL to ADL4, the mapping will be first to ACME, and from ACME, we can map to ADL4. So this is the common interchange language. That was the idea. In this case, of course, there's no interchange language. So we will have dedicated mechanisms. In this way, if we add a new language, we, have, we just know that we have to define the mapping to ACME, and then we have automatically the other mappings. Right? So that's the idea. So common denominator, the lowest set of possible entities, the basic and uh, the, the basic goal is to provide an interchange language among these ADLs. By providing that, also the goal was to provide interchange format for development tools. Okay, kind of standard common language, and if the tools are built on that, then we could have uh, well, could ease our job. Also, an underlying representation for developing new tools for analyzing and visualizing architectures. How does ACME look like? This is again an example, just pretty the same as the, the previous one, where you have keywords like uh, component, connector, attachment, like here we have the simple uh, client-server system, In ACME, there are two components, client server, there's one connector called RPC, a component has a port, and co connector has roles. Here, role, role. Component client has a port, here, send request. Server has receive request, connector has two roles. 
collar and collie. Attachment client send request is connected to RPC collar roll, etc. So this is the so you can represent architecture with ACME. That's one. But secondly, it's also mentioned as it's target to be an interchange language. So given some ADL, for example, write, rapida, whatever, meta H, the idea is that you should be able to define a mapping to ACME and once you have the mapping, once you have the ACME format, you can define the mapping to other ADLs. Okay? That's the idea. So now we look at comparing, you will compare this It's again, we, we, the comparison was in this paper, as we said, classification and comparison framework for software architecture description languages. Uh, actually, if we look at that, also in this paper, we can identify uh, three uh, dimensions where we can uh, compare these ADLs. First of all is the, uh, the scope. Some ADLs focused on are more domain specific, others are more general purpose. The focus on elements, some ADLs focus, for example, just on components, others more on configurations. Uh, and the goals, some are just mentioned for communication, and others are, for example, uh, the, the, the goal is to, to support analysis. Okay. Uh, in this paper, they provide a, a comparison framework, and so comparison is basically on, on these four issues, components, connectors, configurations, and tools, and it said, so it must support specification of these two to decide whether language is an ADL or not. So by looking at these four elements, they looked at, at the language and then specify whether it's uh, the a a language is ADL or not. So how, how are we going to represent the components? Uh, how, uh, what are the abstractions provided by the language to represent the ADL? For components, typically, these elements are considered. The interface is the interface. Can we represent the interface types? Does the language make an distinction between component types and in instances. How well does it support the semantics? Can we provide additional semantics? The constraints, the evolution, uh, so how, how does it support the modification of components properties and non-functional properties or quality? Uh, so it's reusable, okay, uh, performance, is that represented, or can we use the ADL to represent the, uh, the components, the non-functional properties of the components? This is a survey, this is a table in the paper. But the idea is, so this is actually uh, to provide you additional insight in, in topic. The survey ADLs provide comprehensive support for components. Components are really first-class abstractions. All seem to make a distinction between types and instances. However, the majority does not support evolution or non-functional properties. That means that quality aspects are not uh, well described in these ADLs. So if you want to s represent the quality in these ADLs, there are still show some limitations. Okay? This could lead to some research problem. Connectors is the same type of elements, interface types, semantics, constraints, evolution, non-functional properties. The comparison result here, it, it appears that, so we said it's ongoing research still, but it appears that the current literature, the support for modeling connectors is less extensive than co components. 
most ADLs have very uh, rich uh, mechanisms to represent compounds, for co but for connectors it seems that it's less extensive. Some consider connectors as first class abstractions, connector as first class abstraction, it means that you can explicitly represent it in your language. So typically you have a, a keyword like connector and then you specify the, the mechanism. <coughs> ADRs that model these connectors also model their interfaces and distinguish connector types from instances. But again, we see here that the support for evolution and non-functional pr properties is actually rare. Okay? There's more research is needed on that topic. Configurations. These elements have been uh, taken into account. That's configuration. So does the language, the ADL, does it provide you support? Does it... To, to describe the compositions, composition of components. For that, is it understandable? Compositionality, can we, is it composable? Can, what, can we compose what we have composed with other components again? Refinement and traceability, can we refine the architecture too, to more detailed design or even to code? And can we trace, trace what we did actually? Heterogeneity, Support for specification with heterogeneous components and connectors. How well does the language support? Scalability. How, how, how can it cope with what, if the, the system grows, how does it cope with that? So you have hundreds of components. How does the language organize that? Evolvability. If the system evolves, so what are the mechanisms for Incremental addition, removal, replacement, reconnection. Dynamism, while the system is still running, does the ADL provide mechanisms for that? To change it, constraints. Or can we describe constraints on the architectural structure? Systemic constraints and non-functional properties again. The results, not, so if we just take a critical look at these ADLs, it seems that no single ADL satisfies all of these classification criteria, which means that we are not done yet with these ADLs. And it's still ongoing research. Most ADL support for understandability, compositionality, and heterogeneity. However, refinement, traceability, evolution, dynamism, and non-functional properties are not appropriately addressed yet. If you plan to do research on, in architecture, these are typical research topics also. I should say that with model-driven development, model-driven software development, the notion of refinement is now also supported. Okay? We can take an ADL, an unspec, a specification in ADL, a program, define transformations and provide the refinement in a semi-automatic or automatic way. Okay. So that's actually uh, the, the next step, actually, how to make these ADLs also executable. The last uh, category item was tool support. So which means so once you have ADL, this was not, this is an optional one actually, but the comparison is looks at, does it have tool support? Does it have design guidance? Is it proactive or, or reactive? So does it suggest, in proactive way, does it suggest the course of actions? Or reactive, does it just notify if you have some inconsistency? Does it provide, do you have tool support where you provide multiple views? representing the architecture from different perspectives. Does it provide means to evaluate the properties? Does it provide means for defining architecture? For implementation generation, it's closely related, and for dynamism. Comparison, every ADL has some support. 
typically visualization and analysis, less effort on refinement and on dynamism. So that's the comparison of these ADLs. So we have lots of ADLs in the literature. And we, we compared, the paper compares it in from four perspectives, components, connectors, configurations, and tools. We see, so we observe that there are still some shortcomings. I should also state that these ADLs were actually not uh, successful. We can easily state that in industry, okay, so far. It is not uh, an industrial practice yet to use ADLs. We, we visual modeling, on the other end, is, is more popular, I should say. Okay. And why aren't they used? So, typically because of the existing shortcomings. Now, let's look at uh, ZADL, XADL. If you look at the, uh, the survey, what we see, many different ADLs have been introduced over the ten, last 10, 15 years. 15 years. We see lots of commonality among these. Components, connectors, configurations. One of the latest uh, actually developments was the introduction of ACME, which actually tries to solve the interoperability problem with these, among these ADLs by providing an interchange language, right, an intermediate form. But there's lots of commonality, but there's no real unification, nor consensus actually on what an ADL should be and what it should consist of. We could say largely the ADLs are largely incompatible. And therefore, that was also one of the key motivations why, why ACME was introduced. So actually to, to gap, to ease the, the interoperability, to, to compatibility among these. No real unification, much commonality, there are lots of difference. So then, then we, if we think about that reflection, there are many ADLs. They all address some domain. Some are more general purpose, more domain specific, avionics, real time, the other folks on styles. Then, but they are somehow incompatible. Well, if you re reflect on that, and we could say, I have an ID. Let's make a, a kind of super ADL, where we just put all the the concepts of these ADLs in that of the existing ADLs in the super ADL. And as such, that is adequate for all domains and projects. Is that possible? Can we do that? And what would be the advantage, the disadvantage? You can discuss shortly, then we two minutes discussion. Groups of two. You can do loud, loud discussion. Different ideas, you want to, but they are incompatible. How about a super ideal? Is that possible? What are advantages, what are disadvantages? But you first discuss with your partner. Okay, let's look at some uh, IDs. Super ADL, general purpose. What would you think of that ID? Yes, uh, it can be made, but it will be confusing, I think, uh, since uh, all the all types of uh, ADLs should be included in this super super. Uh, ADL language, mm -hmm. so, uh, so it it uh, it would not be a specific it would not uh, not uh, be a specific language. So uh, uh, 
Stakeholders cannot understand uh, maybe each other. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to do that for all domains? Yes, it can be. Mm -hmm. But I think there is a problem because when they are looking for different domains, they have different approaches. When we try to combine them, we some maybe we cannot able to uh, reach the all domains because uh, some of them is focused on maybe connections, others the other things, and because of that, they not be result in the super area. Mm -hmm. Good. What else? What else? Anything to add? Super ADL, general purpose. Actually, well, it's actually you have also indicated that if you design ADL, if you have to design ADL, you could design, so you can say general purpose. Um, or if it's to take, so the idea is like we have all these ADLs, they focus on different domains, and we want to unify them. Take the best of all of them and put one language. The bottom line, the, the, the point here is that every domain has also a different notion of an architecture, might require also dedicated component, connector, or configuration descriptions. Uh, we have multiple domains, and the number of domains is also not fixed. Okay. And you can also have other domains. Okay. We might also combine these domains. It's very difficult because of the different notions of architectural component connectors. So in that sense, providing a super ADL is very, very difficult. In addition, the number of domains is not static. So we are not in a, in a closed, closed to, uh, system. You can have another domain. So then you have to refine your super ADL again. Second, in last week, we talked about that stakeholders have a direct impact on architectural description. Stakeholders have the concerns, and these concerns typically define the drivers, architectural drivers. They, they shape your architectural description. So we have multiple domains, but also multiple stakeholders. And every stakeholder has a different concern. So in that sense, these two, the case of multiple domains, which is also open-ended, the case of multiple stakeholders, which is actually also not static, complicate to provide one super general purpose ADL. That is a language with which I can express all the domains in an appropriate manner. Okay. So it's not just general purpose representation, but also being able to, for specific domains, provide also dedicated support, dedicated mechanisms to represent the architecture. So no one ADL will actually ever fit all projects or domains. We might have a very general purpose language, but this language, the problem could be that it's less expressive. It could you might not be able to express the, 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 uh, your domain concepts appropriately. Okay? So that's general purpose. We cannot just say I'm going to introduce all the existing elements. It's not possible. And you cannot be very general because you would like to have dedicated support still. Like uh, ADL for avionics, for real-time systems, for analyzing uh, uh, performance, for simulations. Right? So somehow it's, it's, it's less expressive. Second idea is then, okay, well, imagine this super ADL is not possible. What about defining domain-specific ADL for each separate domain? Like we have it now, right? Different ADLs have been proposed for different domains. What's a DSL? 
domain specific language is a language dedicated to a particular domain like for avionics as we have seen for real time systems for simulations domains insurance systems etc so what are the advantages disadvantages of such approach so we don't have one general purpose we said it has limitations because we cannot express now if we say define a domain specific language for each domain DSL what's the disadvantage there or advantage there what are the advantages and disadvantages can shortly think about that so we have seen the one extreme general purpose now we go to the other extreme domain specific Think, <laughs> think, argument, reason. Okay, lots of thinking, uh, at least. That's good. <laughs> I see you thinking. What are advantages of ADL? What's the advantage of domain specific language? Dedicated, you can provide dedicated support. Right? Any other advantage? This advantage, yeah, good. Maybe uh, when we adding another domain, it can cause the problem because uh, we just specify the specific domain. So I think uh, because the other domains can have different properties. Mm -hmm. so so dedicated support but scope is limited you don't want to concentrate your only, yourself only to that specific domain you could say I have a project which is quite large and you have to know all the different domains you have to be able to represent different domains right. so advantage disadvantage there are some uh, advantages so it provides level of abstraction of the problem domain you can it, it supports understanding how you view architectural element concise self-documenting can enhance productivity is reuse of the knowledge and can allow validation and optimization of the domain at the domain level because it's dedicated disadvantages Finding the proper scope, that's what you said. You want to actually also, well, you said, so, uh, you don't want to be that specific or you want to be able to, to specify that domain, but what about the other domains? But within the, the DSL itself, also finding the right scope, the proper scope of DSL is also not, not easy. At what level, are, how specific should you be? The related costs, Developing a DSL, ADL, is not, of, of course, trivial. It has some cost. These are the uh, problems. So on the one end, so the, I try to go to the motivation for XADL, ZADL. Very general purpose ADL is, is, is general purpose, but it, it, it fails to be domain specific if you require more dedicated support like domain specific support then it's limited on the other hand if you have very domain specific language your scope is very narrow you will not be expressive for other domains okay so actually Zadel tries to solve this it's a new, new, uh, the, one of the latest introductions in ADLs. Provides an ADL that provides only the core concepts, but which can be extended by users with different, possibly, conflicting goals. Okay. What they say here, okay, we cannot have a very general purpose, and we don't have to want to provide a domain specific language. So let's provide some core 
which, which is extensible, which we can modularly extend. And that's, that's the motivation. We want to be able to, for any domain, just take the language, ADL. If we can use the ADL, we use it. If we can not, we should be able to modularly extend the language itself, customize. See? What's the mechanism for this? So it's called Zadel X ADL. It's actually XML-based ADL. Why is the XML used? It's good for structured data storage. There are tools and technologies. And you have the notion of XML schema or data type definition language where you can define actually in your schema definitions, you can actually define your own grammar, your own language actually. Okay. So XML schemas provide a meta language for developing languages. Well, exactly, Xadel consists, what's the core of Xadel consists again of these four constructs, components, connectors, interface, and co configurations. But it has also extension mechanisms. We it is said that Zadel is modularly composable. What does it mean, modularly composable? You can define new modules without changing the existing language. It's modularly composable. The extensions are just modular. Okay? There's no invasive adaptation needed. You don't need to change the, the core. So you have the core, you have specific goals, and if you want to, have, uh, to represent that, you define what's, what's basically using schema definition languages by in a modular way. You can encapsulate ADL features in, in modules. You can add new modules to add new features, extend existing features, make tools available. And also one of the reasons here was also to experiment with these languages. You have the core, you define new XSDs, you change. So you define, you have the, the mechanism, the platform to, to, to define your own languages. So this shows this kind of pattern. On the one hand, it's just general purpose where it's needed at the core. On the other hand, it also provides mechanisms to be domain specific. How is it done? Well, by defining the uh, modules. And modules are basically like XSDs, schema definitions. Zadel 2, uh, this is the paper. If you can also look at the website, provides a set of modules predefined that form an ADL, but in addition to that, it provides mechanisms to provide new modules to customize. Plus, the, uh, the Zadel has some tool support called Arc Studio, which is Eclipse plugin. You might look at it if you have time. But um, it's all actually XML. This is an, an example uh, of the modules in, in, in Zadel. Here you see typically the XML labels, XARC, ARC structure, component. So instead of defining the, the, the keywords in a separate language, XML is used. XML together. And in X, using XSDs, new language elements can be added or refined or customized. I will not explain the details of this, but uh, it's, uh, it's noticeable, it's, it's quite, quite interesting. Yeah. Let's evaluate these ADLs. Okay. One of the questions in the break was, are these ADLs also used? in industry. How successful are these? Actually, I, I said that they were not successful so far. 
Okay, everybody agrees on that. The expected success is, uh, is not achieved actually. Okay. What's the success here? That it's, it, 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 the, uh, it's transitioned from, from academic to industry. That's the success. It not, should not just be kept at, at academic level, but also industry should use it. Did the industry use it largely? No. So in that sense, it's not, not successful. But with Zadel, uh, with proposals like Zadel, so more extensible mechanisms, maybe could, and model-driven engineering, ADLs, so textual representation of architecture, could have still a, a, a better motivation or, or, or there could be even a necessity for that. But if we evaluate these ADLs, the benefits, it's just like visual modeling, it describes the system at a higher level, abstraction level, it provides a formal way of representing the architecture, so it's, it's very, very precise, intend to be both human and machine readable, it permits analysis of architecture, as we said, can support automatic generation of software systems, and with a proposal like Zadel, can be extensible extensible XML based ADLs. The counterpart, there's still actually not a, a common firm agreement on what ADL is, except that it should consist of component, connectors, configurations, etc. Current ADLs in use are still relatively difficult to parse and not fully supported by commercial tools. Have you ever seen such a tool? It's very hard. In the mainstream tools, you, you cannot find easily such ADLs. In general, over the last 10, 15 years, it was basically academic work rather than industrial goal. Industrial. Uh, for very, some ADLs were also too domain specific, were optimized toward a particular kind of analysis or domains. So that brings us to the, the, the modeling level. So today we have actually discussed modeling. The need for modeling, we have to make it explicit. We have looked at modeling the architecture in the UML and textual description language. I will not further elaborate on ADLs. In the project we will basically use visual modeling. And later on here we have only looked at actually the mechanisms to, to use UML to represent. Uh, architecture. We have not looked at multiple views, which is a, a further specialization of, of modeling, which we will consider later on, how to define the multiple views of the architecture. Questions? No questions. All clear? Okay. So next Wednesday, we will continue with architectural design methods. See you then.